Hi everyone, it's Justine and today's video is about color. First, I'd like to tackle the basics of color theory, the combinations that the human eye likes and dislikes, and then I teach you how to use the learnings, either when you create a collection, if you're a designer, or on a very pragmatic day-to-day -day basis when you put your outfit together in the morning, because it matters there as well. If you already know what triad or analogous palette mean, you can just skip to the second part of the video, otherwise stay here with me. I'd be using a color wheel, which some of you might know already from my channel on other videos, and I'd guide you through the technical terms to start with. We start with the basics. Here's my color wheel. First, we have the three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. I get secondary colors by mixing two primary colors together. If I mix yellow and blue, I get green. If I mix blue and red, I get purple. If I mix yellow and red, I get orange. So I have three primary colors and three secondary colors. Tertiary colors are made by using a primary and a secondary. If I mix yellow and green, I get yellow-green. If I mix blue and purple, I get blue-purple. If I mix red and orange, I get red-orange. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Until now it's easy. In the end, we have all the colors on this basic color wheel. Now I'd like to split my color wheel into two halves. One half, reds, orange, yellows, are the warm colors. The other half, greens, blues and purples, are the cold colors. Now each color on this wheel is called a hue, H-U-E. To each color, I can add white to make it a tint, black to make it a shade, or grey to make it a tone of itself. And I happen to have it here on this super practical pocket wheel. For instance, if to yellow I add white, I get this which is a tint. It's on there. If I add black, I get this shade of yellow. And if I add grey, I get this tone of yellow. Tint, shade, tone. You can do the same for each of the colors and you get a much broader color palette already. A monochromatic palette stays within one hue and only adds white, black and grey. This is one monochromatic palette based on the one hue that is red. I could also add the first neighbor, in this case red-violet, and build an analogous palette with red, purple and their respective tints, shades and tones. The eight colors in this part here build an analogous palette and it's still very easy on the eye. Let's go back to the other side. A complementary color is made by taking one primary color, for instance blue, and its absolute opposite on the wheel, here orange. Orange is made out of the two colors that blue doesn't have, right? So blue and orange are complementary. That the eye doesn't like. So to twist that, you should replace orange by something that's here or there. And it would work better. A triad is even worse because instead of taking two colors, you're taking three that don't belong together. For blue, you would take yellow and red evenly spaced out on the wheel. So that's a triad. You could also say blue-green, yellow-orange and red-violet. It's less obvious, but it's a triad as well, evenly spaced out. The split complement of blue is the color left and right of its complementary color. So in this case, it's yellow-orange and red-orange. Those two build kind of a Y on the color wheel. That's a split complement. It's not super conservative, okay? It's not so easy on the eye, but it's already better than a pure complementary combination because at least you have two colors here that kind of fit in together, and only the blue is really contrasting. Then a tetrad is made of two pairs of complements. Here yellow, orange, blue, violet, plus yellow and violet. I get those four colors, that's called a tetrad. And if you pick a tetrad that builds a perfect square, for instance, yellow, red, orange, violet and blue-green, you see they're equally spaced out on the wheel, they build a perfect square, well then they're called a square palette. Now how to use colors in fashion? First, I'd like to get back to the question of color temperature. Warm colors in general will be louder, more energetic, more dynamic, maybe also a bit more aggressive. And then the cold colors 
blue, green, purple will be maybe a bit more quiet, but also very elegant, maybe a bit darker. Ideally, when you design a collection or, or when you design your wardrobe, your closet choice, you want a mixture of both. Because only cold colors would be very quiet and only warm colors would be too loud. Also, if you're designing a collection, you definitely want cold and warm to cater for different tastes of a wide range of potential consumers. However, using consistently only warm or only cold colors can contribute to defining the style of your brand. Lanvin often uses dark blues and generally cold colors and shades. It is a very elegant, classy brand and that's the image you have of them. And then you have Jeremy Scott, as so Moschino, doing exactly the opposite. <laughs> he mixes up bright colors, complementary colors, in your face colors. So the color identity, so to say, of a brand is essential because people, especially visual people, will remember the color universe of a collection longer than the details of the clothes. Next question, how to modify colors to build a harmonious color palette. Monochromatic and analogous palettes look very harmonious to the eye. You're actually taking colors that are already close to each other already and you're only adding white, black and gray. So it really doesn't change the essence of the color itself. Easy one. As soon as you start crossing from one side on the color wheel to the other side, no matter where you are, you're going to start having clashes and the human eye does not like that. Some like it this way. <laughs> but if you want to count down the combination of two complementary colors, for instance, you can add black or white to one of the two colors to make it a shade or a tint of itself and then it's already easier on the eye. Let's keep the example of the complementary colors on the wheel, no matter where you take them, but they are completely opposite. You can mute one of the two colors, for example this one, by adding a bit of the complementary one into it. That's called muting a color. Then, although the two colors are actually completely opposite, they now both contain a bit of the same thing and it's better for the eye. Next thing, you can also change the proportions of each of the colors in the outfit. One color will be dominant, while the others will be just accents, accent colors. And of course, you can do the same thing in a print, modify the proportions. In general, using complementary colors in equal proportions will always look like it's too much, too loud. But if you change the proportions on your print or on your outfit, then it's gonna look okay for the eye and it's even gonna look modern, dynamic, sportswear-like. American brands use that a lot. I hope this video answered your main questions about color, color theory, what works, what doesn't and why. Thumbs up if you learned something. Thank you so much. To learn about how to choose colors from a mood board, this video here and it's fashion month so if you want to know how to critique and review a fashion show, this video is for you. That's the one from last week. I see you next Sunday for a new video and until then, take care. Bye.